Okay, we're back for uh, part three of this video. We're just going to remove this timing chain and uh, we'll apply some heat to that bottom gear and get rid of that. And we'll uh, put our new one on. We decided to buy a, a double over this time. So it's, uh, it even has a price tag on it. Look at that. This is what we're using. And uh, double rover chain. So let's get this, uh, let's get it installed. Okay, when we're installing these uh, bottom timing gears, when you have a three-way gear like this, or even a nine-way, um, always read the instructions. So in this situation, zero is uh, the stock location. And then we have uh, A for advanced four degrees and R for retard four degrees. So we're going to be installing this on zero. And uh, I'm just going to apply some heat to it right now and we'll get it on there. We can tell by that sound change that's on all the way. So let's get that time machine cleaned up and get that on. Okay, same as before. So we got our uh, bottom pointer, our dotted, right at 12 o'clock. Now we'll get our camshaft. So our dots line up. Okay. Take that back off, put our chain on. We'll oil this chain and do everything as we, uh, as soon as we know if this is going to be good. Okay. I think we're going to be good here. There we go. That's what we needed. We just needed the chain to be tight. And I left it a little bit loose for the center there. And we're tightening the dowel pin as well. So we're going to uh, get some Loctite on these bolts. We'll get them torqued on and uh, we'll oil up the chain and we'll continue. Okay, guys. We got our timing chain on. It's extremely tight compared to the, compared to the one we took off anyway. Which is good. Just a quick thing, I torqued these down to 240 inch lips, which is, uh, inch pounds, pardon me, which is uh, 20 foot pounds. Check your uh, your specs for your engine and make sure that's correct. As well, I used uh, I used this Permatex uh, medium strength blue sealer. I'm not showing you this so I can uh, promote it. I'm letting you know that you should probably use some form of thread lock on these bolts before you tor torque them down. And a lot of people use these cam plates. I, I'm, uh, I use them on performance builds, but also that's an option in case you're uh, concerned about anything going wrong. It's uh, 4605 comp cams, and it's just simply torque the bolts on, fold the tabs over, and off you go. Just a tip for everyone. When you're assembling this en these engines, a lot of the time I'll have a little bucket of lacquer thinner and I'll... Uh, I'll rinse off the parts like the bottom timing gear. That's why I just covered all the oil came out of it. The chain, the top timing gear. Which leaves them pretty dry and non-lubricated. So a lot of the time, I just work in some assembly lube into the timing chain. After it's been installed, just take a couple minutes. Whether you use assembly lube or uh, if you're using uh, engine oil, just make sure you uh, kind of go over to make sure it's all, it's all covered so it's protected when you do your initial fire up. All right, we went ahead and we measured the uh, the oil pump pickup. And wh what you want to do there is obviously you want to measure the oil pan, the depth. I just use a one of these, right? Put it on there. 
And uh, you want to put it on close to where you're measuring the uh, pickup tube, right? So that'd be more in the front. And you want to make sure you allow yourself three eighths, maybe up to half an inch of clearance from the bottom of the oil pan to the bottom of the pickup tube. Okay. Anyway, I just thought I'd share a couple of things. We're using a seal power uh, oil pump. It's just a um, standard uh, volume pump. As well, we use the seal power uh, oil pump pickup. So those are the two items we use. There's the numbers for them. We measured them and then uh, we hit it on there. Sometimes it looks a little rough when you do it. I use a 5 8 wrench. A lot of people have the tool. I, I've been buying the tool for about the last 30 small box Chevy bills, but I never get around to it. And uh, I always put these together. Then right after that, I'll actually take them apart. And I just want to make sure there's no debris inside of the, uh, like I think I need debris inside, right? So I'll usually spray some brake clean. So it comes back out into the uh, that hole, or feed hole, and gathers up any small residue pieces, and I'll blow it over there after, that may, uh, that may have... Uh, dislodged inside the housing when we were putting the uh, pickup on. Likely not, but it's always a good thing to uh, make sure you go through that. Then the other thing you want to do when you have this off as well, I just want to make sure the shuttle here is, uh, it functions like it moves in and out. This one does, and it's actually sticky, so I might actually address that. And this is where that is. Oh, sorry. Right, right behind the spring here, okay? So make sure that that works. Make sure it's not sticky. Make sure it's clean in here, and then we'll uh, we'll look inside the pump. We'll take a look in there, see if we can see any debris or any dirt, anything that we have to clean out of there. Even as much as any uh, any burrs, anything that might get in the way. Okay. As well, when you look inside, uh, first I got my fingers blocking that. When you look inside of here, you always want to take a good look inside of here where they drill that out. Sometimes there's some shavings like on this one here. I can feel them on the edge. And uh, just make sure you clean all that out and inspect everything. Make sure it's good and then reassemble the pump. All right, we went through the oil pump real quick. We deburred uh, inside our feed hole. Everything looks good. Nothing wrong. So we'll put it back together. We'll start putting this back in there. I actually marked the gears. I knew where they went. So I just wanted to keep them in order. And that's uh, that's the big part of it. Okay. On top of that, we uh, we oiled our shuttle. And then uh, worked it back and forth a few times to make sure it worked fine. So that would be inside of here on the end of the spring. So we're good there as well. Okay. So we get this bolted back up again. And uh, get it together. Okay, I gave this a quick tight and put it all back together. You want to make sure it uh, still works when you get it all back together. Okay. Sounds about right. And then we don't want to leave it uh, leave it like that. So we're going to add some... Uh, we're going to add some uh, assembly loop to this. We want to make sure we get it all coated inside there. After all, we don't want it, uh, we certainly don't want it starting dry, right? All right, there we go. That's so clicky now. <laughs> so make sure we get a good coating of lube inside here. Some people pack them with Vaseline, so they have pressure right away. But the most important thing to do is make sure that you have it all ready to go. And this is uh this is gonna be just fine the way we're doing it here. We'll uh we'll proceed with putting the uh the little coupler on for the uh oil pump shaft. We'll use the plastic one that came with it. We uh we are not using like the performance model one or nor do we have a need to. Some people choose to buy a steel uh a steel oil pump drive like 
pardon me, a steel collar and uh, attached to an oil pump drive, you can do that as well. It's totally up to you, however you want to approach it. All right, so I oiled this up a little bit and uh, pressed it on there. These can be a bit of a bugger to get on. You might want to, if you tap it on, use a plastic hammer and don't use a, a lot of force. And then you can just push the, uh, the other rod on there after. So we're ready to set the oil pump in. The other thing you want to make sure is you have the correct bolt. You'll just want to measure. This is the bolt out of this one. It doesn't have a, um, like the TBI engine had a different washer, pardon me, a different bolt head end, but this is the one for this. So make sure you have the right bolt. It's uh, it's t it's a tad longer than a short head bolt. Okay. Hope that helps, and we'll get this bolted on. Okay. So when we're sending the oil pump in, obviously, we're attached here. We'll go through the, uh, the drive hole through the main cap there. Okay. Then we're going to sit on these two dells. Perfect. Now, just to double check everything, because I showed you the, uh, the bolts already, the differences. You just want to make a quick measurement. Check here. So that's the depth, and that's to the top of the back main. We don't want to hit the main. Let's take a look at our bolt. So perfect. We actually have the right bolt. We're good to go. And we can bolt that in there. When you're taking out your oil pump, also, use a little bit of oil. I've read... So many different things over the years about oil pump bolt torque. I I, uh, I don't even want to say what I torque them to, but it's uh, it's something you should definitely read up on. Maybe research. It's easily available information. But for, let's just say for this sake, I'm going to uh, do 60. All right. So there's that. So we have that done. We'll test fit the oil pan one more time and we should be good to go and we'll get the timing cover ready to install. Okay, so we just pounded our seal in. I use a little bit of a ultra black. I, I just put an ever so thin coat all the way around it. I pound it in. You can use a seal driver. You can use a socket. You can use a two by four. You can use whatever you want. Just make sure you keep it clean and uh, it goes in there all the way. It seats in the back and uh, you're good to put it on. Okay, another point I want to bring up here real quick is this, oops, is an oil dipstick guide tube. All right, now it goes inside the block here, and your dipstick will sit on top of it here, or maybe not on top of it, but your dipstick obviously goes on the other side of the block out here. Now, the reason I bring this up is very important. Number one, you will find, even after you run it through a hot tank, a ton of crud will come out of this tube, okay? But not only that, the hole it was in will also be full of crud and uh, debris too. So even if you go through the uh, parts washer at the auto, at the automotive machine shop, you may not take all that out. So I strongly suggest uh, taking your brush and going through the, both of them actually. If you're going to do this now, I'd go now, like I go down. But try and remember if you can and do it before you take the block to the machine shop. Then obviously you can clean this before you install it. Just a little tip. Actually, I did install that tube. We'll use one of these uh, bent push rods we got from, uh, from our TBI engine there. Gently seat that in there. I'm just going to hammer lightly. There we go. Seated. That is done. So, yes, yeah, so you can install that just by simply using a, an old push rod. You can hear the uh, sound change. And like I say, I tapped lightly so you can hear the difference in sound. Okay, we just installed the oil pump, or pardon me, the oil dipstick guide tube. But here's an important part right now, and this is kind of the part where I stop and just double check everything. We're going to put a timing cover on, and we're going to put an oil pan on. That pretty eliminate, pretty much eliminates our bottom end. Now, from this point, you want to make sure, are the mains torqued up, are all the rods torqued up? I checked these, they are. Is our guide tube in? Yep, we just put it in. Our oil pump pickup and our uh, oil pump are on and torqued on. They are. We have our dry shaft. We do. 
Time and chain is on the torch. It is. We should be good to go. Time and chain is lubed. It is. Everything's good. There's nothing we need to go back behind the covers and look for. Because once we do these up, we'll be spinning the engine over and putting the cylinder heads on. So like I say, this is a time where you just sit back, take a look, make sure you got everything, and uh, move forward. All right, let's keep, let's keep going. Okay, let's get the timing cover on. We do silicone them. Some people don't like to use a gasket maker or silicone with new gaskets in an engine, but after a few warranties, I decided, you know, it wasn't all that bad of an idea. Instead of wasting half of day tearing something apart. And not only that, it typically comes apart better. We have a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of anything on, on, the, on the gasket. Typically, that's what I find anyway. So, we'll just do these up real quick. And then we'll clean up after this. I don't like any residue after this. And then, uh... We'll get ready to put the oil pump on. Something I like to point out when I'm doing these, same as the oil pan. It's all the quarter inch usually. If I don't torque it, just a wrist action. I usually go over it three times to make sure they feel exactly the same. And that way it gives the gasket a little bit of a chance to compress and just make sure that we can go back over it. But that's it. That's how I do these and I do the oil pan the same way. We'll cover that when we're doing the oil pan. All right, so we'll get ready to do the oil pan. Okay, we have our oil pan gaskets on the block. And yes, we used uh, Ultra Black. So you can see some of it right there. Underneath the cork. And a little bit underneath the rubber. And then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do the same on top of the cork here and then we're going to set the oil pan on. My heater's going and I don't want to uh, keep talking while well, it's hard to hear. So I'll shut this off and keep siliconing. Okay, we still have uh, heater going. There's a little more silicone there than I usually like to do on a new engine. However, for those of you that followed along in this so far, you'll remember that this oil pan was uh, had quite a wow in it. It's kind of twisted. So I'm going to take my chances and use a little more than usual and uh, get it bolted on here. It's kind of a slow process doing this. You know, each, put each, each bolt in by hand, make sure you don't cross thread it. And, and then we'll uh, start tightening it down and uh, evenly so we can take a little bit of care and not rip the cork gasket that we decided to use. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to put these bolts in, and we'll go through a crisscross pattern and get it bolted on. Okay, so we'll just tighten these back, these, uh, start tightening these bolts. So we use a cork gasket. A lot of people like the one piece because they don't leak, right? So I just kind of do the, uh, I like to do the small ones first. So, uh, part of the reason is, if your pan is bent like this one is, then we can, uh, Just slowly kind of get it straight again, right? Plus these pans aren't as strong as the uh, factory ones. They'll damp pretty easily, so we're just going to take our time and put these on. Okay, we'll probably do this in several steps. This is a... Uh, like I say, this is an RPC pan I bought off a of Summit. I already feel like it's denting with very little uh, effort, so we'll have to be pretty careful with it. You'll find they all get loose again right away. So if you just do this and go through these incrementally and, and evenly, You'll be able to spare yourself any heartache with leaks or cross threading or anything like that. That's my experiences anyway. So 
let's just say we did that all once. We're going to do that three more times. All I really like to do on, on these cord gaskets is just a little bit of rest, right? Just a little bit. And we'll do that three times. And uh, we'll go around and do each one of them. Now that we know it's even. You might find that most of these are loose again. That's okay. Just make them all the same as you go around. And uh, by the third time, they'll be getting pretty snug and that uh, core gasket will be moving a bit. And we should be okay. Okay, second round. So, again, same wrist. And they're half a turn on that. And that's why we kind of do that, right? They'll probably all feel a little loose again. Yeah. So we'll do this all again for the uh, second time. Then we'll come back and do a third time and see what happens. But these all are quite loose again. So just take your time when you do this. That way you don't bend the pan and squish the gasket out. Okay. All right. Third time. Again, it keeps tightening. And that's, uh, if you look along the seam here, you'll see we're not squishing the gasket. Or really any of the uh, ultra black out that much. Because we're just taking our time and doing it incrementally. It feels the same every time we come back, actually. A little tighter back here. All right. Fourth time. Still. A little bit left there. Maybe we're going to find they're not that... Uh, We'll be doing this at least one more time. This should be the last time. Yeah, it's pretty good. Don't be discouraged if you find you have to go around a little more often than you thought. Because again, we haven't pushed the gasket out. We're now squishing out silicone. This pan had quite a while in it. And uh, just take our time and do a good job. All right, so I'll double check these before the end, before we put it all together. But let's just take a quick look. And what I wanted to explain is, like I say, a lot of people don't like cork. But they're not squished out of there. We didn't really bend the pan, even though it is quite weak. Yeah, looks pretty good. All right, we'll keep working on this. We'll come back and we'll do a little more work. Okay, it's the next day. So like we were talking about yesterday, we went through steps to uh, tighten down this oil pan. Now, I just want to point out, if you tighten these too tight initially, it'll just bend the little uh, the tin underneath. It'll create a little bit of a, a U-shape. It'll oblong the hole in the gasket, and it'll start pushing the gasket out. So as you can see, we're pretty consistent all the way around. The bolts are nice and snug. They're not going to come loose. The seal's in. We have no issues there. We should be just fine. So like I say, take your time. If you have to lean on the uh, pan with your elbow, like it, you can start with the uh, with the inner bolts. You don't have to start with the outer four all the time. We didn't do that here. And then uh, make sure you got it on right. Take your time. Don't dent the pan up. It'll work just fine. Those cork gaskets will seal and they'll uh, provide years of uh, leak-free uh, existence. I, I don't know if existence was the right word, but here we are. All right, let's get some more stuff on this engine. Okay, well, before we flip this over, we might as well uh, put a couple more things on here. So let's put on the, uh, just do the block heater here. Got a little bit of antifreeze on my finger there. I'm just going to... Lubricate the rubber with uh, antifreeze. Okay. So basically, let's make sure that's pointed at 9 o'clock. So if we're looking down and looking up at the engine, we'd be at 9 o'clock, right? That's where we want to be. Push it in. And uh, I think it's an 8 millimeter. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, oil filter adapter here. So here's the uh, part number for the milling. 
And this, part of the package here, did not come with bowls. There we go. So we'll throw that in. We'll point this, uh, this part to the back. Just as a reference point, I think. I believe these are eight foot pounds, so these bolts are uh, just a 7 16 headed uh, bolt. If they're eight foot pounds, we will uh, we'll do that with uh, an inch pound torque wrench, and that would be 96 inch pounds. Fifty first. Let's go to hundred. There we go. Oil filter adapters on. We have our block heater in. We'll roll it over and we'll start doing the uh, our mock master. Okay, we're gonna put the seal pump rod in. I just put a little uh, assembly lube on the end of it. Put a little bit of oil in the. Uh, in the hole. There we go. We'll silicone the uh well we already did the gasket to the plate. And we'll bolt it in as well. One of the things I like to do just to make sure everything's squared up, show the fuel pump bolt in as well before I uh, tighten the plate up. And that's it. We'll uh, grab a 716s here. I kind of like to center these. There we go. Well, we're, <clears throat> sorry, we're already here. We might as well just uh, install the fuel pump and the motor mount. So, here's the fuel pump we're going to be using. It's a M6624 Carter. It's supposed to be the one that uh, resembles the one that came off the vehicle. So, that's what it looks like there. So, we'll take this out of the package and we'll get it on. Okay, so a quick tip here. Let's look at these two holes in the front. This one here, you can see I was light through it. It's just uh, something that was done at the factory. They punch a hole at the bottom here, and uh, that's it. It doesn't go to anything. Like I say, nothing there. This one, however, you can see the fuel pump rod. And you need to cover that hole. We need to make sure it's covered. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole bunch of oil flying out there on your initial fire up. Now we just use a small bolt like that one there, that little 3 8 bolt. We're going to uh, touch that up and put it in there, and uh, we'll keep going here. Okay, so we just uh, put the harmonic balancer on. Now one of the things you want to make sure of is make sure you put oil on the crankshaft and around the outside of the balancer where it contacts the seal. Install the balancer and then what we're going to do is we're going to tighten the bolt on here for the harmonic balancer. We're going to put our, uh, our uh, bridge mic back on. I don't have to use a bridge mic because I can see like when the piston stops, dwells and goes back down, but it's hard to pick up on the camera. So what we're going to do is we'll just turn it over and we'll make sure our timing marks line up um, with the timing cover in the balancer. Make sure they're right on the money. That way when we're timing the vehicle later, we know we checked that. Okay, we found TDC. And we, uh, we can see that we're right on zero. It's always good to double check that. 
sometimes you intermix parts and they're not right. Um, you could actually spin a balancer on the rubber. There's all kinds of things. It's just good to double check. That way when you're, uh, you know, you're timing the vehicle later, you're having a different issue, you can eliminate this as being one of the issues, right? But anyway, we're going to move on. We're going to keep putting it together here. Okay, so we're going to get ready to get the cylinder heads on, and guess what? We don't have any Dell pins. So, we talked about this on the TBI 350. This is a engine headache kit, and basically it's just a bunch of small parts that you don't think about that uh, you can get in a little kit. This came from Engine Tech, HK100. And here's the little paper it has with it. And basically, let's go over it real quick, but it's got... Uh, you know, four head dowels, two timing covers slash oil pump dowels, uh, three cam bolts, and, the, and uh, three wood rough keys there. So here it is all laid out. Okay. So it's a nice little kit to have. Like, you never know when you need some of this stuff. I always like to have new cam bolts. And uh, what are these? Grade 8. Perfect. So, nice little kit to have. We're just going to install these cylinder head dowels and uh, get gaskets on there. I use, a, I use a brass punch, just in case I slip off and hit the deck surface. Everybody has their own way. Again, it's just what I do. Okay, so we just installed those four dells. We cleaned up the decks. We cleaned up the gaskets. We installed them. And I just wanted to point something out. Make sure that when you're doing these jobs, and I've just seen something here recently that's caught my attention that I wanted to bring this up. When you uh, do cylinder head heads on a 305, you really need to use a 305 gasket. Okay, you can use a 350, and people do it all the time because that's what they get sold, or that's what they get told, or various reasons. There's no 305 stuff around or whatever. But you'll end up with quite a substantial compression loss. Well, I don't know about substantial, but it'll be noticeable. And uh, I just wanted to show you something here real quick. So I, I just had a 350 gasket kit laying here. And... Uh, I put it over top of the uh, of the 305 head gasket, and it's quite a bit different. You know, there's a lot of uh, weights of space all in here in this blue area, right? So that's what happens when you use a 350 head gasket on a 305. So whenever possible, or always, when you're doing a 305, you want to get the 305 gasket. Here's the Felpro part number right here, all right? Okay, just like the last time, we have a full rebuild here. We have uh, both heads surfaced, new valves, new guides. No, pretty much the full rebuild. But what I want to point out here is uh, we have a hole here that's plugged. We have a hole here that's open. This would be our temperature sender, and that would be on the driver's side front. So that's where I'm going to place that cylinder head. But right now, just because these have been in the bags for a little while, and... Uh, coated in WD-40 so they wouldn't rust. I'm just going to blow them down with some brake clean and blow them off with some compressed air. And we'll set them on the engine. All right, we got the cylinder heads uh, just sitting on there. Got one bolt in the center on each side. Wanted to give them a quick real light coat of primer. Well, I'll give them a quick coat of paint after. Make sure you uh, cover your exhaust ports and uh, find some little spark plugs to screw in there if you're going to paint and uh, blow into that area. Other than that, we'll wet this dry. We'll give it a coat of blue. And we'll uh, get torquing these heads down. Okay, it's next day, and we're going to get started again. So we just gave the engine a coat of paint last night and let, let it left it to sit. And, uh, and we had about two and a half feet of snowfall, or two feet or something. Quite a, Well, a lot of drifting. Big storm in, uh, up here in uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan. So here's our lifters for this engine. We uh, This is how they actually got delivered to us. So we'll get these out of the bag and wipe them down and uh, get them ready to install. Okay, so the lifters, I think we covered this in the TBI build. Basically, I just wipe them down with a little bit of lacquer thinner. You shouldn't really do this with your hands. I don't know why I'm swinging it this way. Wipe them down with a little bit of lacquer thinner. Make sure there's no foreign contaminants. One thing you want to check for all the time is to make sure it has the uh, spring clip in there. Okay. 
The other thing that I noticed with these lifters, and I think I talked about it before, the last batch I had the yellow cane pumped up, and then this one didn't. So there's some inconsistencies. These ones move a little bit. And uh, don't be alarmed. I think because they were so far behind, just their processes are probably a little bit different putting these together and getting them out the door. But we'll, uh, we'll clean the bodies up. Then we'll uh, apply some assembly lube to the bottom. And then we'll uh, put a little bit of oil on the body itself, like along the body. And we'll install them. Okay, so we're just going to start putting some uh, assembly lube on the bottom of the lifter here. We uh, took all the lifters out of the bag and we only had 15. So we'll get the 15 ready to install. We'll just set them in the lifter valley after we uh, put a little bit of assembly lube on the bottom. I don't really, not really interested in getting it on the sides too much. I just want to put oil on the side. So that's kind of what we do. And then, uh, like I say, we'll oil the sides and uh, put them in. Okay, we got some lube on the bottom of the lifters. We're just going to install them into the bores. Remember, to apply oil. One thing about these lifters, they need to spin as well as go up and down really nice. If you find a particular lifter doesn't seem to want to be in that uh, lifter bore, feel free to move it somewhere else. Typically I'll spin them when I put them in. And they should just typically fall to the bottom eventually. Except for this one, it doesn't want to. There we go. So just take your time and do this. Like I say, make sure they all spin and they all seem to want to be there. Weird about that one. We'll figure that out here in a minute. And just continue doing this till all 16 of them are in. Okay, so we're a little bit out of order today. I just wanted to get those lifters installed, cleaned up, and uh, in there. We still have to torque the heads on, so we're just going to lift those valve covers off and. Uh, Install the head bolts and torque them down, and then we'll um, make sure the push rods are clean and get them in, and continue on. Okay, small block Chevy head bolts. We covered this in the TBI 350 video, but we'll do it one more time. We got three different lengths. We obviously have the short ones that go all along the bottom on the outside. These go under the valve cover on each end, and these are the middle seven under the valve cover. They're, they have a coating on them. They're from Engine Tech. They're an HB142. That's the part number. I bought them for this particular engine, but I see they sell them for uh, engines like Vortex and stuff as well. So that might raise a question. Are these torqued to yield or torqued to a number? And the manufacturers I've spoken with say you can do both. You can either torque to yield or do it to a number. But they do warn that these torqued to yield are a little bit tighter and you can't reuse them. You know what, guys, for the price of these things, I, I, I don't even think I'd reuse them anyway, even, even just at a regular torque. So keep that in mind. And like I say, if this is the way we're going to install them, a little bit of oil underneath the, uh, the top there, and that's about it. Okay, so we installed our bolts. So a couple of these uh, bottom bolts, the top ones have all went in really nice. A couple of the bottom ones got pretty tight toward the end, so I backed them off a turn, and then when I put them back in, they were fine. I'm not really sure. I've heard of people having that problem before. It could just be the coating on there. I'm not too sure. They didn't all do it, just a couple did it. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to start torquing it down. I'm just going to do 30 pounds on the first pull, and I'm going to use my old uh, beam wrench to do that. So one of the things that we always talk about is make sure you stagger everything from the center out, right? There's all kinds of ways you can do it. There's a, uh, there's obviously diagrams on the internet and stuff. I usually do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but some will say a little bit differently. You do it however you want. Like I say, there's a lot of information out there on, on the internet for people, and uh, just find the one that works for you the best, and do that one. All right, I'll get these done and we'll do a final tour. Okay, so we got our cylinder heads torqued on. So when in doubt, make sure you go over everything twice. Make sure they're all torqued. 
And if you have any doubts at all, just double check everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Always double check. Right now I'm just going to take the, grab some push rods and get them cleaned up and get them ready to go in. Okay, so we cleaned some push rods up. We just put them in. We're going to throw some assembly lube on the ends of the push rods. On the valve tips, a little bit on the threads. We'll uh, get the new rock arms out of the box here. We'll take a look at them actually. And we'll put them on. We only got 15 we can do because of uh, the missing lifter. As well, I decided to use uh, the factory push rods. They uh, they were at least straight, whereas all the uh, Tech ones we have are bent. I think four of them are straight. The rest of them are bent. These rock arms. Here's the rock arm kit we're using. It's an Engine Tech kit, ERK three forty six. So we can take one out of the bag here and take a quick look at it. Just set you guys up here. See how it looks? They look good. I'm sure they'll be just fine. We'll get these cleaned up and uh, we'll start sending them on. Okay, we have a little bit of assembly lube there. Like I say, we did the, uh, kind of did all three, uh, the stud, the valve tip and the rocker tip or pardon me the push rod tip we'll start setting these on we'll put some lube inside there and then we'll put the uh the rock arm balls in there okay so we just threw a little bit of uh assembly lube in there we'll just throw the uh sorry not really good at this we'll just fire that uh ball in there and you know what it'll uh It'll soak itself in, plus we'll give it a little squirt of oil. We'll do all six, well, we'll do all 15 of these, and then we'll uh, start sending the valves. Okay, so the people that watched the uh, TBI 350 video probably remember this drawing. And what it was, was a, it's a way to set valves. So if we were at number one TDC right now, we could set those four intake and those four exhausts. Now, in order to set those, those lifters need to be all the way down in the lifter bore. If they're not down in the lifter bore, we're not at number one TDC. You would then rotate the engine 360 degrees clockwise in the rotational direction, which would take you to number six TDC. Then you can set those uh, four intake and four exhaust. And then what we do is we do zero lash and then uh, add a half to three quarters of a turn after zero lash. Now, we could have put our finger in the spark plug hole, I guess, and figure out if we were TDC or watch what valve opened and what valve closed the last time to see where we were at. Or we could just look at this paper. It'll pretty much tell us. So we can see the very back, we have a lifter up. That's number eight cylinder on the exhaust. So if we were number one TDC here, we were going to be setting number eight cylinder exhaust. If we're number six TDC, we don't have that one on there. So I'm going to have to say word number six. So right, right now we can set intake three, four, six, and eight. And just to verify, let's just look and see if they're all over or pardon me all the way down. So three is down, four is down, six is down. Oh, pardon me. And eight is down. That's right. So we can do these four right here. So let's get going with those ones. We'll set a uh, number three intake first. Okay, so make sure you have a little bit of lash. You want to be able to move it up and down so you know. Okay, so we can move that up and down. So let's just tighten it till we have a, uh, till we get rid of our lash. Okay, right there, I have uh, zero lash. That that uh, push rod no longer turns freely. If you want to double check, just back it off an eighth of a turn. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So sometimes it just takes a minute to get your feel for this. It's really easy once you get going. 
So we'll just tighten it back up to zero lash. Part of the problem is, and I'll tell you right now, your socket will get caught in the uh, rock room once in a while, and it'll kind of give you a false reading. That's why I, I like to double check. Okay, back to zero. So right now, if we're at zero, the best way to explain this to you, maybe I'll just pick this up, is to give it half a turn, we can go from, say, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Okay. Now you can do three quarters of a turn if you like as well. But I'm going to do half and I'm going to do all of, all eight of these ones right here. And then we'll uh, come back and we'll do the, uh, we'll turn the engine over and do the rest of them. Okay, we set those eight valves. So we'll turn this over 360 degrees and we'll come right back to zero on the pointer. So when we do this revolution, we'll be at number one TDC because we set everything based on number six TDC according to the sheet we have. So we'll just go all the way around. Bring it back to zero right there and we'll start setting the rest of them. So now that we're number one TDC, we can set number two intake. We haven't set that one yet. I'll save it back here a little bit. And we can set three and pardon me, four and eight exhaust. So you can tell right now that those are not, not the ones we set. We got to make sure they're all the way down, and they are. So we're good to go. So we'll start setting a number one intake and number one exhaust. Actually, we'll point it right there and we'll do a setting together. So again, I can't stress enough. Make sure you can, sorry, sorry. Watch rocker behind me. Make sure you can pick that up and move it around, okay? That's very important. So when you want to find a zero lash, it's the easiest way to do it is to be able to spin the push rod and just keep tightening until it no longer, until it no longer goes up and down or no longer spins freely. If you go by the spinning method, though, and not the up and down, like I say, if your socket catches the rocker, you might think you're done, and you're not. So you always want to double check this. Sometimes I just do it slowly in one area because it doesn't, uh... So I should be getting there right now. Okay. I'm almost there. So I, I no longer, now it's not easy to spin anymore. So I've taken up that lash. If I have a question about it, I'll back it off a little bit. I'll check it again. Nope. I can I can spin it again easily. Go to tighten it back. Zero lash. From that point, on this one I'll go from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I'll do one more because that was a bad position. So again, we can move this one up and down. You can see the rocker move up and down. So let's just start tightening it. Still up and down. Getting close. I can still spin the push rod very easily. Okay, right there. We're zero lash. The push rod does not spin easy. I mean, it spins, it just doesn't spin easily. Take it from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Do that on the next six, and your valves are set. Okay, so this is going to be the end of uh, the 305 build, part three. Oh, just in time, my heater's coming on. I hope I didn't push you through the uh, valve adjustment too quickly. But stick with us. We're going to keep getting the rest going. I'm going to order uh, the lifter when I go in the house. I need some exhaust manifold studs for this manifold. We have the intake and the valve covers to put on. We have a carburetor rebuild. The transmission's getting rebuilt. We have a lot of work to do yet, so stay with us, and part four will be coming soon, and then hopefully we get the car here right away. All right, thanks for watching.